there are more people talking about projects today than there were 12 months ago. Now, I do think there are... Can they get financing? Well, they're they're, I think they're, they're, the answer is you can get financing if you're the right developer. You can't get financing if you're, if, if you're like so many people that were getting financing. You know, you look around New York a little bit, you look around the country, there's a lot of projects that stand half finished. And maybe those projects should have never been built. The first time, you know, one of the banks that have trillions of dollars worth of CFPS going to do when those loans come through? Are they going to foreclose? Are they going to forgive? Are they going to redo? You know, what, what's, what is the, you know, what's the crystal ball? But I don't think anybody knows. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's just the CMBS loans either. It's a lot of the portfolio loans that are sitting in one bank's portfolios. Uh, right now, those loans would be performing. I think one of the dangers in the marketplace is that if you look at how value trends have shifted and how loan to values have shifted, there are, are thousands of buildings in New York City that have negative equity positions today that are still positively cash flow. Um, you have these properties that still can have positive cash flow even they have even though they have significant negative equity positions and the day of reckoning is not really going to come until that mortgage matures. And that's when we'll see how things are going to be handled. That's why the, the, the tsunami that we all expected to occur of distressed assets is not occurring because those mortgage terms were so advantageous. We really haven't seen a, a huge implosion yet. Why not? The, 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 the special servicers have, have been very smart about this and, and effectively have weighted everything out. So interest rates are low and they're much better off extending, modifying the loan. You're right, you can't rebuy. The real home is one lender rebuys the current lender. Right, so every loan is being worked out. You think that in the special servicing business, I think, can lead to a lot of new business. So if you become a special servicer, you, you become the workout expert uh, for all the loans that are in trouble. So it gives you kind of eyes into the mortgage industry. Yeah, they're basically operating with inside information. It's like the uh, it's legal. wolf in the hen house kind of concept when you have investors that would prefer to be on the equity side getting in on the debt side. Um, they are seeing everything firsthand and understanding how transactions are being structured, and they have the ability to jump on an opportunity before it gets out to be With good credit, and I come to you and say, Ian, let's do a project. Could we get financing for that? It's painful, but it's tough. If the numbers work, and you have a lot of equity in it. Dan, talk to us about where geographically in New York. You know, far west side, uh, there's a company called Kimpton, kind of mid side. They opened up Pink 48. Where do you see opportunity in New York City? Or, or the metro area? Well, I think that the, the, the greatest opportunity in the metro area is Manhattan. And I, I think that, uh, you know, as you get in concentric circles away from Manhattan, I, I'm very bullish, you know, on the, uh, you know, on the west, <coughs> the west side. We're, we're just going to... Where, where, where? Well, the, the Javits Center, the rail yards, the, you know, uh, Jeff's projects on 42nd Street, our new hotel on 44th Street and 8th. I, I think the way to make money is, first and foremost, you have to understand that it doesn't come easy. That, you know, the, the, the people that have come, that came out of the, you know, my, the, the first recession I really lived through as a person that came out of the company was the, 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 the 89, 90, and then, then we went to another one in the late 90s, and we, and, and we oh, this is more serious. It's got to be more serious. Yeah. The people that come out of them are the people that were skilled, had you know, sort of put in their time, never ever believed it was going to be easy. You know, you, you are a deal maker. You, you, your projects are large. You take on financial risk when you start these projects. If we had to separate for the people who want to be deal makers, you know, access to capital, raw brain power, or cojones. <laughs> How do you rank those order the most important thing? <laughs> it's also timing. <laughs> um, I would say you obviously need to be in all of those. Uh, you know, but I, right now, I think the opportunity, if you look at where, you know, where the opportunity is, you know, the new development, um, you know, I think the opportunity is now going to be, you know, as Dan said, people that have the expertise as an operator. So an operator is going to become much more important. People like Ian who were able to take buildings and make them cool and hip and bring in the restaurants and the bars and suddenly people were attracted to places that they never would go before because and Ian was able to add kind of the magic and the signal. <laughs>
up, is there an investment opportunity? Well, the flipping business, business, you can still flip, uh, but you can flip from Los Angeles. Look, I, I, I haven't thought realistically that you know people should buy residential condos and co-ops to try to flip. I mean, why not? Incredibly you know, I think you're buying. I think you're buying to live there, and then if it goes down a little bit. Who cares? If it goes up, we're happy. I don't think you know. I think it's too hard to find the market, and with closing costs and commissions, which of course we love the commission part of it. But with that, I think it, I think it's a tough, tough thing to do in New York. Okay, you know personally. Uh, I mean, I bought things in Miami you know, last year. You know that were sold at seven, eight hundred dollars a foot, which were selling for two hundred dollars. Now, I don't think you're ever going back to seven or eight hundred. Maybe they'll go back to four hundred. Some of them have it. You know, so in a real depressed market, then you can rent them out and you can basically cover your maintenance and your real estate taxes and get maybe a one percent return on a month. Okay? But I think that's a less risk scenario. I, I just don't see buying apartments in Manhattan for, you know, respect. This is going to be a very uncomfortable question for you, probably, but where, you know, where are commissions going? You know, I, I know the headline is still five and a half, six percent. It's still, where five, are you it's still five and a half, six percent. Bob, uh, where are you guys making? Obviously, distressed is a big part of passing down right now. When that slows down, what picks up? Where's the opportunity? Well, fortunately, I think that the distressed component of the market is probably going to be with us for another two or three years at least. And we could get into a situation where we have a market that's moving in two parallel paths, one positive and one negative. Uh, because the, the amount of over leverage in the system is at an extent to which it's going to take a lot of appreciation to bail those properties out, to get positive equity positions again. So I think to the extent that we get into a position where fundamentals start to improve, value starts to improve, we could see some very positive things for people who are riding the train on that track, while there's still some pretty negative stuff going on for people who took on too much debt. And I leverage, when things are good, creates extraordinary results. But leverage, when things are bad, creates extraordinary distress. And, uh, you know, real estate is never bad. But I want to thank all my panel, Ian, Dan, Jeff, Howard, Dan, Mark, Mason, Jack. Well, the market has been depressed. Real estate pros have said that there are some reasons to be optimistic. Hopefully next year the market will be even better. We look forward to seeing you next year at the Real Deal 7th Annual Forum. Thank you. Lauren Elke's The Real Deal. <laughs>